Hey everybody, it's me, Eric Kimball again, out here in my mini beds on Plastic Experimental Garden. It's October 20-something. I can't remember the exact day, but uh, it's uh, uh, rain's coming in. The wind is picking up, and before that hits, I want to plant a green uh, cover crop in several of my mini beds that I haven't already done so. I, I planted that one over there to rye. I'm going to plant oats in the rest of these. And I, so I just want to show you the, my process for planting uh, oats or just about any cover crop in these little mini beds. First of all, uh, it was yesterday I harvested the watermelon radishes out of here. So what I'm going to do first is just pick away the weeds, a little bit of uh, buckwheat uh, mulch. I had buckwheat in here before I planted the watermelon radishes, and I used the straw when I cut the buckwheat to mulch between them. So anyway, I'm just going to remove that. I think I'll put that in my compost pile, which is off to the edge of the garden. And that's the first thing I'm going to do. So, okay, so now that I've removed the little bits of weeds and other uh, organic material on the soil, I'm going to crack the soil with my fork. I showed this in a previous episode. I discussed this in my mini beds on plastic report number one. And in that uh, episode where I showed cracking the soil, I put the fork back about six inches from the edge. Well, you're not seeing that. I haven't got my, like right about here. And I've decided that it's better to get that fork all the way up to the edge of the frame and that way when I crack the soil I'm actually aerating back in under the plastic a little bit which seems to me a desirable thing okay so I'm going to crack the soil it only takes a second it would take less time if I were not doing it one-handed and holding the cord here out of the picture with my other hand. Anyway, you got the idea. Hopefully you watched that video and that's what I'm doing here, just cracking this. Okay, so there, I've cracked the soil. Now that the soil is cracked, I'm going to use a short-handled hoe to just shallow cultivate it. If you have my mini beds on plastic report number one, you know that my vision for this gardening system is to use only a few tools and, and uh, you know, you don't need a lot of expensive tools to buy or take care of. All you need is that fork that I showed already, a short handled hoe like this one, which I actually show in the report, and the whiz bang pocket cult cultivator. Absolutely, positively, the best cultivator you're going to ever own for mini beds especially. Okay, so the soil here is cultivated, a little bit chopped up, and then I'm going to just level it off a little. Get a level bed. All right, if I see rocks, I'm gonna set them up here. But I've done that a few times here. There's really no rocks. Now I'm ready to plant the seeds. Oats. Oat seed from Johnny's. You probably don't have to get it from Johnny's. You could go to the local agricultural or garden center near you and find oat seed. Now what I have found is that one tablespoon, this is a tablespoon measure, is enough to do half a bed. Put it in my hand and I'm just distributing the seeds over 
the top of the bed. Pretty simple, right? I like to use, when it comes to oats, two tablespoons. And I am sure I'm sewing this much thicker than it needs to be, but I'm not growing a crop. I'm growing a cover crop. I mean, I'm not going to harvest rye or oats in this case. So there, I've scattered the seeds over the top. Now that the seeds are scattered over the top of the ground, I'm going to take my little hoe and I'm going to chop them in shallow, shallow chop. Okay? That's one technique. Shallow chop. Not every seed goes down into the ground, but the more you shallow chop, the more they do. The other option, the other technique is that you can use your hand, make the claw, make a claw like this, and kind of just poke it repeatedly into the soil. You're going to recreate, you're going to push some seeds down, and you're going to create these divots. And then you can go like so, kind of massage the earth, <laughs> massage the soil, and that will take many of the seeds and poke them under. But the idea is you want to get the seeds, not every single one of them, but most of them, with under the soil just a little bit. Okay, you're going to see a few still on the top. That's okay. So the seeds are sown now. Okay. The next thing to do, and this is important, is that the, the soil needs to be compressed. And these seeds will sprout better and grow better if the soil is compressed. And I do that by stepping on it. It's compressing about half an inch to three quarters of an inch with my full weight on there. That's good. It's not like I'm going to compress it too much. I'm just doing this at planting time. I'm not walking over it. And I'm getting the soil packed down tight around those seeds that are under the soil. Okay. This is important. Pack it down good. Okay, I packed a poor little worm there. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mulch over this bed using some of this sorghum Sudan grass that I showed in a previous episode. Remember, I cut it short and I dried it. And here I have it to use. I, I had an enormous pile of this stuff and it's almost all gone. I've made good use of it. But I'm not heaping it up here. I'm just putting a light layer over. This will help hold moisture. If you put it on now, the grass will grow up through it. So I've just got a little bit of this uh, straw mulch lightly. I can see the earth all through there. Okay? One more thing. The final step in this process is to water the bed. Uh, new seeds need moisture. This ground is a little dry. We haven't had much moisture. I think rain is coming in. I think. But you never know for sure. And getting some water on the soil is what needs to be done. So that's what I'm going to do. Just like that. And while I'm at it, I'll water this one over here. And before I end this video, I want to show you a bed over here that I planted to oats a while back. So you can see what will happen here, weather permitting. If we get snow 
with this storm and we never get any nice weather or halfway nice weather before winter hits then I don't think my oat bed is going to amount to much but I have a feeling here mid-October we may have uh, uh, three weeks maybe four of good enough weather to get some green up let's let's uh, go see that nice looking oat cover crop in that bed right over there and there we are lovely bed with uh, oats in it and this this bed the one next to it is kind of not as nice looking it's lower on one side than the other but it's still a cover crop it's there it's holding the soil it's uh, uh, contributing to the, the benefit of the microbiology in the soil it's all good for the soil to have these green cover crops it's so simple to seed one of these beds if I weren't showing a movie of it and explaining it, I could probably do it in two, three minutes max. Doesn't take long. And it creates a be some beautiful uh, greenery to look at even. Um, and these, these oats will die down over the winter. They, they'll winter kill. And uh, in the spring, the soil should be easy to work. Now, that will not be the case with the rye that tends to be a pretty uh, tenacious uh, crop that will get through the winter and really take off in the spring. It'll be interesting to see how manageable that will be in mini beds. I'm going to have to uh, deal with the rye. That's an experiment. That's an, an experiment, I should say, here in the mini beds on plastic garden that uh, um, I'm doing. And I'll find out in the spring just uh, how that goes. but. The beauty of rye is that it puts an enormous mass of roots into the soil. You can see I have broccoli over there, it's still producing. And I have uh, celery here that my wife has used and is still using. And we'll cut that before the really bad weather gets here. We'll store it in the fridge. Over yonder, you can see the Brussels sprouts, aren't they neat? Hey, everybody, thanks for watching.